are you doing today? Do you feel like doing a little bit of DIY with me today? Come on in. Let's get started. What do I have in store for you for today? Oh my word. Yep, today I am DIYing with these foil pans, cookie sheets, foil cookie sheets, that you can get from Dollar Tree to come in a pack. Do I have three amazing DIYs using these that are so budget friendly with an outcome that is amazing that I think you're absolutely gonna love. So I'm gonna quit my gabbing, let's jump into it, and let me show you what I have in store for you for today in DIY with some foil cookie sheets. Cause why not? Cause we can. Let's get to it. Who is today's KB Creations Crafter of the Day? You'll wanna stick around to the end of the video to see if it's your creation that's being featured in today's video. Let's jump in and do some DIYing, shall we? This here, it's your standard piece of plain copy paper. I wanna make a template, so I went ahead and folded one end about two inches up. By folding it, it gives you the capability of making a template that is equal or the same on both sides and only having to draw out one side. Have you ever done a face or a heart and one side comes out better than the other? Yeah, if you fold your paper, you only have to do one side and you're gonna have a perfectly shaped, well, in this case, it's gonna be a flower petal. I wanted two different sizes, a larger one and a smaller one. Once I've got them drawn out, I'm gonna go ahead and cut them out. And once I unfold them, would you look at there, we've got a perfect flower petal. Look at that. Pretty easy, right? Just don't overthink it. Look at that, we're like 30 seconds into the video and the cookie sheet is making an appearance. I'm gonna cut off, I guess, those elevated edges because we don't need those. We just need the flat, textured part of this cookie sheet because oh my goodness did I tell you I've got three DIYs for you using these that are going to be amazing. This is where that handy template that I made comes into play out of the copy paper. You can take a pencil and you can trace the petal on the foil pan. You may not get pencil marks but it will give you the indentations so with these templates, I'm gonna do eight of this larger petal. And yep, you guessed it, we're gonna do eight of the smaller one as well. You are, you're gonna get a lot of petals on two sheets. Take in this Rust-Oleum matte metallic paint in the color of gunmetal gray. I painted the cookie sheets before I even cut them because I felt like it would be easier just to spray the entire cookie sheet than trying to spray each individual petal. You're gonna save on paint and it's gonna make it easy. Once I've got it painted, I'm gonna go ahead and cut out each of the petals just using some regular scissors. The foil cookie sheets are pretty thin, so I would just get an old pair of scissors that you're not too fond of and use those. Tim Holtz Distress Ink in the color of Walnut Stain is the perfect way to add age or distressing to your DIYs. By taking a stiffer paintbrush, this was actually a makeup brush that I cut really low because if you cut a brush lower, you're gonna get those stiffer bristles and that's what you need to use this stain to add distressing to a DIY. So just by putting it onto the ink pad and then onto my DIY here, you can see just how easily you can distress it and it adds dimension and character to say a flower petal. Taking four of the eight large petals, I'm gonna start by gluing two of them together across from each other. Then I'm gonna take those other two and glue those across from each other, giving us four points. In the tool section at Dollar Tree, they've got this roll of foam tape. This is a bigger size roll than what you're gonna get in the craft section by Crafter Square. I'm gonna use this to elevate, I guess, the layers of the flower. I didn't want each layer to set on top of each other because then you're not gonna have dimension. 
and dimension adds a lot to a DIY. So just by adding some foam tape there in between each of the layers of the petals, you're gonna add just a bit of dimension, which is then in turn, guess what? Yes, gonna give it personality and character. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue those other four petals just like so, kind of offsetting them from the first set of four that I glued together. Before I move on to the smaller petals, again, I did add some foam tape there just to kind of elevate it. Then I'm gonna take four of the foam petals and add them, offsetting them from, I guess, the last layer of large petals. Just like you see me doing here, we've got eight of the small petals. And so, yeah, we're gonna just continue on the same way we did with the larger ones. This here is what you should be left with. Looks pretty cool, right? Yes, it does. And we made it out of a foil cookie sheet, but there's something missing here in the middle. So to finish off the center here, I went ahead and took what was left of my cookie sheet and I cut it into strips that were about an inch thick. With those strips, you're gonna cut slits in them, but you're not gonna go all the way through. You're gonna leave them attached just a bit and you're gonna do that for the full length of this foil cookie strip sheet strip. Yeah, that, because this is gonna be what is going to finish off the center of our flower. And to this strip that we cut slits in, I'm gonna roll it. And as I roll it, I'm gonna place just a bit of hot glue every now and again on there just to keep it from slipping and sliding apart and hold it together a bit better. What's great about using these foil cookie sheets is they are, I guess, pliable. And they're gonna hold shape when you go to separate all those slits that we put in the strip, which then in turn is going to give us the center of our flower. Pretty cool looking, right? Who knew you could do such fun things out of a foil cookie sheet that comes in a two pack from the Dollar Tree. Once I got it nice and shaped, took it outside, gave it a quick coating with that gunmetal gray spray paint so I can then put a nice glob of hot glue here in the center of my flower, place this and look at that, how nicely it finishes it off. These are quick, easy, budget friendly, and how fun are they? On the back side, I added some twine so I can hang this because in my bathroom, I did in fact make a set of three and place it right above my toilet and I couldn't be happier with the way these turned out and the way they look. For this next DIY, back to the drawing board, folded some copy paper and made this shape here. Gonna cut it out. What is this shape for? This shape is going to be the blades of a windmill. Yeah, a windmill. Pretty easy shape to replicate. You can find these shapes on Google Image Search that you could actually print out and use as a template if you want. I just went ahead and used a ruler and cut my own out to the size that I wanted it to be. And well, this is what I came up with. Pretty easy, right? Yes. So now with this windmill blade, I'm gonna take my foil pan I'm gonna get two blades on one pan and I'm gonna cut out, I think I cut out five or six, but I ended up not using one. So maybe it was, I only used five out of the six, but you'll see, go ahead. You're gonna get two on each foil pan. Did I say that already? I did, I'm repeating myself, oh well. Again, I'm gonna need some strips. So for this one, I am cutting, I wanna say six strips that are about an inch wide. And to these strips, I am going to fold the outside edges into the center, making, I guess, a strip that's about a half an inch wide. And I'm doing this because I want my edges to not be sharp. And so by folding in each of the edges, you're gonna have a smoother, I guess not so sharp of an edge. And I did this, I wanna say again, to six strips of foil that I cut. I'm gonna take two of the pieces of foil that I folded and hot glue them together. Now this is going to be the arch of what is going to hold the windmill blades. This is gonna be different for everybody depending on the size windmill that you wanna make. So you're just gonna kinda of have to measure it yourself. 
For the base of it, I also took another couple pieces of the foil strips that I folded. I folded in the ends to give me kind of some tabs that you can see I can put some glue on and I can hot glue it to another strip as well. And this is gonna be where the base of the blades, I guess, are glued on. It's kind of like that half moon or wagon wheel, I guess. Then I'm gonna go ahead and take the two that I glued together and I am going to attach them to this strip here. And again, like I said, it's going to be different for everybody. That's why I'm not doing measurements because it really is dependent on what size your blades are. All confusion aside, at the end of the day, you want a contraption that looks like this to glue your windmill blades onto. The color that I used for the windmill blades, I wanted to go a bit lighter, and so I went with Rust-Oleum's Arctic Gray. And yeah, I did end up only using five of the blades. I'm gonna use hot glue for this because the hot glue really held nicely with the foil pans. It wasn't something that was coming off rather easily. When I hot glue the blades on, I am going to overlap them because they kind of have that overlap look, I think. Don't they? Yeah, they do. Just glue it. I'm leaving a gap there at the bottom because you want to make sure that the height of all your blades are the same as they go around. So yeah, kind of had trial and error there, but lesson learned, figured it out why my windmill was looking a little wonky and it was because I was gluing them all to the bottom. But now you can see how my windmill is coming together, taking more of Tim Holtz Distress Ink in the color of, mm -hmm, it doesn't change, walnut stain. This was an afterthought, probably should have distressed the blades before I put them on, but I didn't, so I'm doing it now. Doesn't hurt any, and I'm just gonna add some age and rust to these, because windmills are aged and rusted, right? Right. Oh my word, the excitement is real. Look at how amazing this looks. They're at the bottom. I'm gonna use one of these white and black houses that you can get at Dollar Tree right now. It had kind of a stand in the back. You can see that I removed it and I actually cut the house in half because it was a bit too tall. Using some hot glue, I figured that this would be perfect to place right there in the center, covering up that hole. And to the center of the house, I'm gonna go in with some of Dollar Tree's farmhouse stickers. And this is what we are left with. How easy is that? Made out of a foil cookie sheet. Ah, amazing. Next up, I'm gonna use one of Dollar Tree's plaques on the back side. It's a blank canvas. I'm gonna go in with some of Waverly's Cashew, one of my favorites, and I'm gonna give the back side of this a good couple coats of this pink. Then I'm gonna go in with some of Waverly's Hazelnut, another one of my favorites. I wanted to add a line down the center of the plaque and it's easy to do just by taking a thinner paintbrush and a ruler and drawing a line. There is no need to have a perfect line. We're not looking for perfection because this is a rustic farmhouse DIY and the more imperfect it is, yep, the more perfect it is. And I'm gonna add a bit of distressing to the edges with the hazelnut as well. I am one that doesn't like to do coat after coat of paint, meaning start off with the hazelnut as my base coat, then go over it with the cashew and then sand for days trying to get that hazelnut to come through the cashew. I just feel like it's easier if you kind of go in after your base coat and just add the distressing or the chipped edges wherever you want them to be. And then you can lightly go in with some sandpaper and soften up those lines to make it look distressed. You're gonna get the same outcome with less work and using less paint. Because if you think about it, when you start off with the base coat of a hazelnut, that's a lot of wasted paint that is under the cashew because when you distress, you only want certain areas to come through. And so, yeah, it's gonna cut down on time and cut down on the amount of paint you use. And well, Waverly is a hot commodity where I'm from because I can't get it anymore. So once I've got those edges done, I'm gonna go in with my smaller paintbrush and just add more to the plaque itself there in the center. This is where the foil pan comes into play for this DIY. Dug into my stencils. These are, I wanna say a chipboard stencil that I got from Michaels or Hobby Lobby. 
and I am going to use them to trace the letters to make myself mm -hmm, foil letters. Farm fresh foil letters, that is. Once I've got my letters all cut out, I'm gonna use some Jenga blocks on the back side of them to, you guessed it, to elevate them up off of the plaque. Again, giving them dimension and adding personality and mm -hmm, character. Did I say that yet? If I didn't, that's what we're doing by adding dimension. Okay, I may be mildly obsessed with doing DIYs using these foil pans because I love the way it looks, especially these letters. I'm thinking that this is not the last time you're gonna be seeing some foil letters in a DIY. What an easy way to do them. I think I'm actually gonna try and see if my Cricut will cut through the foil, that would make it easy and give me a bunch of different fonts. I bet if I use the knife blade, it'll work. I used scissors and a razor for these and just put a cutting mat underneath it. Sorry I didn't show it, but it was pretty basic. And so yeah, that line that I put down the center really helped line up my letters and keep them even. There are holes at the top of this plaque, and so to cover those holes, I'm gonna use some knot stumps. That's what Kayla used to call them. Yep, knots that I tied out of a thicker twine, and look at that. Just by hot gluing them over the holes takes care of that problem. Then I'm gonna take just a piece of twine that you can barely even see. Yep, and I'm gonna hot glue it to the back to act as a hanger. You would think that I would have learned my lesson the first time, but I did not. I really thought I wanted to keep my letters that Arctic gray, but once I got it done, it just felt like they were too clean and they needed some distressing, some age. And so I did, I went in with some of Tim Holtz Distress Ink and aged these up, distressed them up, rustic them up, rustic them? Is that a word, rustic them? Hmm, well it is now. I'm gonna add that to the Kelly Barlow vocabulary dictionary that I'm gonna publish. Okay, I love these so much that I think they have found a place on my front porch ladder, but I can't show you yet because I still need one more DIY for the ladder. To be continued, who is today's KB Creations Crafter of the Day? Well, it's going out to Casey Visual, who's bringing to us a recreation of my DIY Jenga block frames using the small canvas panels from Dollar Tree. Casey, I am loving the colors you chose, the pictures you placed in there. Thank you so much for sharing your recreation with us today. I am sure glad to be back DIYing. I really missed it. I'm glad to be back here on YouTube creating with you all after I took a much needed month off of work. It was definitely one of those times that I needed the time to rest and recoup and recharge my battery and just really kind of process things that I hadn't been processing, accepting things, coming to terms with things, and um, not, I guess, somewhat living in denial like I was or putting things on the back burner. And so I am back, it feels good, and I am ready to create more for you. I hope today you enjoyed the DIYs I did for you using, yes, Dollar Tree spoiled cookie sheets. So much fun, right? And budget friendly. If you're interested in seeing more of my Dollar Tree DIYs and you wanna get more inspired to create, make sure to click on the video right over here and it'll take you to some of my past favorites. Until next time, everybody, I hope you have a fantastic day. Happy crafting on a budget. Stay happy, stay safe, stay healthy, but most of all, stay positive, please. Slash your second try. Bye for now, everybody.